Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. As mentioned, my name is Sikulegile Rotenlov, and I'm originally from Zimbabwe. I came to Ireland in 2015, and I claimed asylum. I wouldn't bore you much with the details as to why I came and how I claimed, but I would like to highlight that it was for the fear of my safety. I just want you to understand and take this from this talk. What I'm about to speak about, I want to make a clear understanding that I am a Zimbabwean, and every asylum seeker have their own identity. So let's not get it caught up or misunderstood that asylum seeking process is an identity. Secondly, I want to make it clear that we as asylum seekers have something, something very, very valuable for the Irish community or for anyone in this room to offer, not just to give or to be given or just to take. Before I go on on how we're gonna do that, um, I just want to walk you through my journey, my own experience, my own understanding of direct provision. Everyone has their own, but I want to share my own experiences and how I have overcome, broke down, and still be able to stand here today. So I came to Ireland, claimed asylum, and I had that uh, I'll be given free accommodation, free food. It will be cooked for me, it will be prepared for me. That's secondly. Thirdly, I was given 19 euros, 10 cent a week. Guess what? The energetic me said, you know what? I'm going to convert this money. I'm going to be able to buy this for my mom. Zimbabwean currency doesn't have that much value. So I immediately converted that money into my home currency. And I was like, I can be able to do this, this and that and that and that. Meaning that I know that it has wiped out everything that my family had at home. So I have to try and bring it back or try to support them to have a decent living. But reality kicked in. I'm no longer in Africa. I'm miles away. I'm in Europe now. Just out of curiosity, how much do you spend on your lunch? Anyone? Weekly? How much? 25 euros. For the past three years, I had to live on 19 euros a week, not a day, not a few hours, or for lunch for that matter. I had to live on that, understanding that I had toiletries to buy, I had food, food was provided, but it's Irish food, I'm African. So <laughs> uh, it wouldn't taste the same as it would for you. On top of that, as a young woman, I would have different needs, different things that I want to do with the money that I get. So you can understand that it was really hard for me. That was one of the challenges that I had to face. Moving on, thinking that I can be more productive to myself and to the community, and still bearing in mind that I want to provide for my family. I want to do something for my little sister that I left behind. I tried to get a job, and the card that I was given from the Minister of Justice, it's clearly stated with my picture, this is not an ID. This is not an identity card. So who am I? I can't identify myself as a Zimbabwean. I can't identify myself as an Irish person or an Irish citizen. So I don't have identity. I'm lost. That frustrated me so much because I couldn't even leave the country. I couldn't go anywhere. I couldn't get a job. I was stuck. I was programmed, or I'm still being programmed to be dependent, to sit there and wait for someone to just give me things. Because if you tell you that you're living on these situations, you're not allowed to, to go anywhere, you're not allowed to buy anything. It's kind of hard. It's hard to keep up. I ask myself, how do I do it? Only God knows. I'm still trying to understand it. I'm still trying to figure out how I am still able to pat myself at the back, be proud, laugh, and cry at the same time and be like, you know what, you got this. You'll be fine. It's okay to break down. But some of you, when you have a bad day, you're like, I can't wait to get home to tell my ch children about it. I can't wait to get home and tell my wife about it. Or my sister, I don't have that. I haven't had that for the past four years. Or even just a phone call. I can't have that sometimes. But that did not keep me down. It pushed me to the point that I'll sleep around five o'clock in the morning just to 
feel less useless during the day. I wake up around 12 or 1 o'clock because the day will be shorter if you slept at that time. So I went on to apply in Kilani Community College. I got in, passed over with accounting. I'm an outspoken person, but my passion is in accounting. I um, applied, got well, and I was encouraged to apply in Co College of Commerce. And I did that. I couldn't progress at that moment because I had read, read the terms and conditions of how to get into the education system. I could not progress. So I had to do a communication skills in, com in care skills. That was something that I was not passionate about. I know how to talk, I know how to have a conversation, but to drag myself out of depression, to drag myself out of waking up, sleeping, waking up, or to take myself out of open prison, I had to do that course. I applied in Cork College of Commerce, came back, and I was accepted. You can see, you can, I can, I, I felt it that I'm, I have a purpose now, I'm moving forward. Then I still remember the lady's voice two days after the interview. Hi, is this Ruth? I'm like, yes, it is. She's like, oh, I just wanted to find out, are you an EU student? I'm like, no, I'm an asylum seeker. She's like, oh, I'm sorry. Are you aware that you are, not an, you are taken as a non-EU citizen? I'm like, oh, I didn't know. So you have to pay about 3,500 a semester. That will round up with extra academic fees to go up to 10,000 a year. Do you think you are able to afford that? In my brain, I was like, are you seriously asking me that? Because does any of you have 10,000 lying in their account? No. But I was asked that question. I was asked to have that conversation. And the irony in that system is that I have a PPS card. I have a medical card that was one of the requirements for you to apply for that course, and yet I cannot be recognized. So who am I exactly? Where do I fall under? What do you take me for? Am I even recognized as a human being here? So I was broken down because I'm so ahead of myself sometimes. I pushed on to go on and I had already applied for a transfer. So I was moved from Kilani, went to Cork. Then I stayed there for some time, looked for other part-time courses. I did the IT skills. Beside all of the struggles of education, there is a lot that really had happened to me. Uh, I felt degraded and emotionally strained in a way that I would be asked or prostituted for sex. Because I'm young, I believe that I'm beautiful. <laughs> so I'll be asked, some people put money on their dashboard saying that, would you like us to have a good time? So. I didn't blame the people that were doing it. I didn't blame the people that were actually engaging in it. Just imagine a woman with three kids having to support them, knowing that they left them at home. They have nothing. She's depending on 19 euros, 10 cent. Are they not people that need to be protected from themselves? Are they not people that need to be protected from the people who are in higher places? So the system has really broken me, damaged me, and I still wake up in the morning and be like, I still have to try it just for myself, just to put a smile on my mother's face or on my dad's face. But I went on to apply in the University of Limerick. After that, it was all good, it was okay. I, I got on, it was an easy process. Rona would know that I, I'm a difficult person to deal with because I, was, I wasn't accepted at the first round in the University of Limerick, but I pushed to the point that I called and said, if there is anyone who cancels, please, can I be put up on first? But I would call her every after two days. The consistency, the push that I wanted to have, because I knew that my situation is, it doesn't look like it's gonna change anytime soon. So let me make myself useful and have a purpose. After that, I here I am. I'm in the University of Limerick, just got my results yesterday, so happy and proud of them. So I went on all of that. I understood that I have been deprived opportunities because I'm an asylum seekers, but 
I got a blessing in disguise because I'm an, I am in the asylum process that I got the U.S. Century Scholarship. So that was a blessing in disguise because if I had got that a year earlier, I wasn't going to be able to get any of this. I wasn't going to be in this platform for that matter. So challenges, they've brought me this far. And the process itself has been made me to be able to stand here today. I went on to create a project called Restart Gardening under Enectus UL, which aims to integrate asylum seekers into the Irish community through gardening and cooking. Bear in mind, I'm not allowed to cook for myself. They cook for me, so it's something that if, even if a child, you have something to give them, if you tell them, don't take that, they'll want it, even if they are not passionate about it. So it's the same with us. We're not allowed to cook. So let me offer something that they have a skill in. Let me offer something that that will take them or that will remove the stigma of that only thing that we want to do is just take, take, take. Have you ever actually had a conversation with anyone who is in asylum process say that, what can you actually offer? What skills do you have from home? Besides asking, oh, why did you come here? How long have you been here? Oh, how is the process going? It honestly feels like I'm in another immigration interview. So if you can ask me, Ruth, You've been here for some time. Oh, you see you've been here. Okay, what skill do you have? What can you offer? Because trust me, I have a lot to offer. I believe that I'm intelligent. I wasn't going to be standing here if I wasn't. I believe that I'm ambitious. I'm outspoken. I have so much to offer the Irish community, the Irish economy. Because if you do not help me to integrate into the Irish community, you are literally training me to be part of those people who are dependent on the system. If I have lived on 19 euros, 10 cent for the past three years, what will motivate me to go and look for a job if I'm getting 203 after I go out of the system? So just have a think about it all before pushing and saying that they're just coming here, they have this and that and that to complain about. Think about how is it affecting your own pockets? Where is the tax money coming from? coming from your, tank, from your pocket, and it's paying for my direct provision allowance. Maybe not, maybe I might be wrong about that, but if you integrate me, if you allow me in, I become part of the community. I become someone who is valuable, who is able to bring something back. So Restart Project aims to do that, to enhance and upskill any asylum seeker who is in the process trying to get themselves to have an M and to have something to look forward to. So in conclusion, I'll go back to my first point. Think about as well as you are educated here. I believe everyone who's here is well educated or advanced or anything like that. Think on how you can actually be that person who is a sounding voice to one person. Change is not about 50 people. You can have 50 people, but you can only make an impact and, and empower on the one person. So if you can have a conversation with even one person and be like, what skills do you have? You have workplaces. Ask around, how can you integrate them through workforce? Because the main aim is actually to upskill and educate asylum seekers. They are deprived of these opportunities. Make it happen for them, mostly. I am Zimbabwean and a proud one. I am African and a proud one. Let's not get it twisted and saying that, oh, that's an asylum seeker. Oh, Ruth is an asylum seeker. No, I mean the asylum seeking process. It's an ongoing process. That a process, it comes to an end. But my identity does not come to an end. I'm Zimbabwean, and I'm a proud one. I'm African, I'm a proud one. I'm going to be an Irish citizen, and I'll be a proud one as well. Thank you very much. <laughs>